The first shotcrete machine was revolutionary. The 1911 patent by Carl Ackley has 27 independent claims. This breakthrough invention allows effective wall concrete placement where there is access only from one side. Ackley's machine made it all the way to Australia by 1914. Television was barely functional in the 1930s. In 1950, the black and white sets were still in less than 1% of U.S. homes. But the 113-year-old wear plate of Ackley's dry material feed system is just the same as those in contemporary gunite machines. His technology has not changed in over a century. You can see that the biggest part of Ackley's machine is the compressor. Bigger compressors have allowed increased material output combined with today's more powerful concrete pumps have also allowed low slump wet concrete to be shot into place. Shot creating is fascinating to watch, especially seeing the highly skilled artisans sculpting the finished form. Things may be messy and chaotic, yet those who know what they are doing can magically carve it all into the right shape. When younger, I built a shot creep building. It was a fun project. Shot creep people in their 20s are full of zeal, even though the process can be a little intense. way before the pandemic, construction help ads were always full of those for shotcrete nozzlemen. This has been a hard position to keep filled. The reason is that it requires both specific technical knowledge and physical skill, combined with a willingness to endure the harsh shotcrete environment. And you can see, it's a pretty dirty project. A sprayer can work alone if the surfaces don't matter, but if they need to be finished, it takes a crew. For the one nozzleman, they have four trimmers and seven or eight guys cleaning concrete up off the slab. Part of shotcrete training is about avoidance of voids behind a rebar. Samples must be made to test the shooter with specific job conditions. The cores are rated to determine how solid the shotcrete test panel is. These are failures, of course. Material buildup on bars increases the spray shadow, increasing the likelihood of voids. The goal is to avoid anything like this. So most jobs also require third-party continuous special inspection during all shotcrete operations. Back to this test panel, we can see them using a vibrator in congested areas because vibrating consolidates concrete around rebar better than shooting does. What if you used very intense vibration to place the concrete, combined with temporary confinement pressure to, to consolidate it even better around the bars? And then forget about the big compressor and the shooting part. What if this better consolidation was also faster and costed a lot less? This swimming pool step cracked because they built it up with shotcrete rebound.
1865, a wave of fear was sweeping the country. Silicosis was taking its toll from the ranks of American workers. Cause of the disease, dust. Results of the disease, disablement, poverty, death. Cure for the disease, none. In 2016, OSHA tightened up the limits for maximum exposure to respirable crystalline silica, RCS, to be 50 micrograms per cubic meter, one-fifth of its previous value, calculated as an eight-hour total weighted average. This is where proper respirators and other protections are mandatory. If a worker is in this environment over 30 times a year, health monitoring and lung imaging must be provided by the employer. Breathe Freely Australia determined that the amount of RCS in the vicinity of a shock creating process is from several hundred times to well over a thousand times above the OSHA maximum allowable exposure, and that the highest risk to the operator's health is likely to be from breathing dust, RCS dust in particular. People cleaning up after the concrete spraying are just as exposed, if not more. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce fought OSHA over these rules. They lost. Because the effects of RCS are delayed for a decade after exposure and are irreversible, affected employers now have to pay extra into a disability fund for possible future medical costs. Bottom line is that these health exposure costs are very real. For many projects, the only practical option is shotcrete. But where we have better options, why are we still spraying this stuff around if we don't have to? One-sided forming is a well-known alternative to shotcrete. Buttress forms where you can't use form ties. Their drawback is basic physics. Heavy concrete fluid pressure builds up with height, requiring an extremely heavy structure that you have to rent or buy, move in, set up, form with, clean up, break down, and transport back to storage. So although the buttress forms automatically provide a nice flat surface, their excessive price and handling costs tend to outweigh the shotcrete labor costs. What if you could avoid the mess, the dust, all the extra labor costs? How about not having to run a giant compressor continuously or cordon off the job site with warning tape? What if you could place wall concrete with robots? Or use less expensive machine controlled excavators? Spacecrete is not funded presently. These methods were all developed in spare time and with only spare change, so to speak. Because of these ideas, the approach to building with concrete now has some better options than before. Obviously, with real resources, our crude advancements can be improved on in many different ways. At some point, this is inevitable. and the GPS technology to control the excavators already exists. This is state-of-the-art shotcrete dwarfed by a big project. To get all flat basement walls, how long will this take? What if you could place wall concrete as fast as you could pump concrete, but without putting all those forms in place? A very low dose of a 3D admix injected into the pump line makes this possible. The modulator makes a very low cost and efficient way to cancel out the pump surges. 
This allows automated placement with ordinary concrete pumps. The big screed is like a 2D printer that makes a flat surface from control joint to control joint. A one quarter of 1% dose of 3D Admix turns concrete into spacecrete. The big screed quickly relocates to place more concrete. The last bay can be full or partial. When you're done, the big screed, the trusses, and the guide members all load back into a single truck.